Um, first, first of all, I just want to say um, how much we appreciate the opportunity to play in the Jimmy V Classic. Uh, it, it's a privilege for us to be here and represent the University of Texas. Um, it's a special, special game, really, really special game, and, and I really, really appreciate the opportunity for um, us to play in this, uh, first of all. Uh, second of all, I, you know, disappointed, really disappointed just in the sense that I thought our team really competed for three quarters, and then it got really tough. And we just talked about it in the locker room, and I, you know, I don't, I don't want to sit up here and make a bunch of excuses. And you know, w w it got tough in the fourth quarter, and they out toughed us. Uh, I thought they competed better, competed a little longer than we did on possessions, and just were a little bit tougher than we were. And and um, again, I'm I'm proud that I thought we handled the atmosphere and and played really well, but it's a four-quarter game, and, and it's something that our team has struggled right now with, which is playing four quarters. Uh, we've had a couple of games where we've played two really good ones, and had one, second quarter's been the one that's bit us the last couple of games, but uh, I just didn't think we handled the fourth quarter very well. But again, credit to UConn. They executed <laughs> terrifically down the stretch and better than we did. I'm not sure yet. Um, that, that that was obviously a difficult loss for us. Uh, she was she started the game great, and she's along with Brooke, our most experienced guard, and and really our vocal leader. Uh, so I, I'm not sure of her status right now, but obviously she's with her having to be out for the game. Then then it's a concern. I believe so. Um, you know, I thought he made some adjustments on Kelsey, really. I, I thought that was kind of the turning point is that we did have a mismatch in there, and Kelsey was playing well. And we didn't move for, you know. I mean, it, you can look at her seven turnovers and go, gosh, you know, Kelsey, why don't you turn it over seven times? But we're all standing there with her having three or four people around her, and we didn't move into space, into her vision. And that's, you know, that's a team thing, and that's where I mean execution. I mean, they did a good job of flooding at her on some possessions that were pretty critical. Um, so I, and then on the flip side of that, um, you know, they do a pretty good job of picking on young kids, and, and I thought that our young kids got picked on a little bit today defensively. And unfortunately, this is a team that you don't want to zone, and that would have been our other option today with this, the combinations that we kind of had to play together with Ariel being out, it may have been a better option for us, but this is not really a team that you probably would go zone against. I think there were several key points in the first half. I thought the uh, we had a couple of possessions where we couldn't get the ball inbounds underneath and turned it over. Um, and then the extra possessions. Often, you know, we got in such a hurry. Uh, I think I think the the beginning of the game or the first half, there, there were maybe a few more things open than we expected, and we got rushed, and we could have easily just taken our time and gone up uh, for some easier shots than what we did. We overpassed a little bit too much in the first half. Um, and again, I thought he made some good adjustments in the second with Kelsey and, and Brooke, and we weren't patient enough to get to the next thing. She heard us in the first half. We addressed it, and then, um, you know, they, they did a good job in the second half go getting Katie Lou going. But uh, Nafisa moves a lot. You know, I mean, that's the thing about her is that she plays that forward position, which is our youngest position right now, and, and um, just keeps moving. And, you know, it's big girls are, are not accustomed to guarding people that move around and get from the three-point line to the offensive rebounds and all of that. And that's, again, one of the struggles that we've had so far is people that move around and, and, and get to offensive rebounds. We Right now we've got an issue with sort of standing around and watching instead of pursuing the ball, boxing out and pursuing. Um, 
those are things that we have to get better at, obviously, before league play. Um, no, I think they just really dialed in. Um, like Coach said, they executed very well and they defended and they took advantage of um, our slip-ups. And so I think that um, at that point they just executed at the end of the quarter and then it led into the fourth quarter. Um, I think obviously it hurts right now, but um, in the long run it's going to be – like, we've already been there, and we've done that. So when we play tough teams, it's going to be like, okay, well, we know what this looks like, and so we know how to handle it. And I think um, right now it's just a learning process for our team because we are young, but that's not an excuse. And I think that um, later on down the road it's going to be um, a positive for us. <laughs> I think it will absolutely help us if we if we learn from it. I mean, I, you know, I'm I'm a little frustrated right now just from a sense of some of the things that occurred in the South Carolina game, the offensive rebounds late in the game, those kinds of things. Um, we're still not there yet, so we definitely we have about three weeks where we really need to turn this thing around pretty quick as far as our attention to detail. And, and again, I mean, I, you know, you are, we've played two or three of the best teams in the country. There's no question about that. But um, we're trying to get to that place, so it's hard to think of excuses and all of those things. But I do think that when you play this caliber of competition and you get into league play and you start seeing different styles, which our league is um, – incredibly different game to game. I mean, you, you, you have bruisers in one team, then you play a team that, that runs a motion and moves around a lot. So I think that it's a good thing that our young players are going to have some reflection instead of it being so shocking to them that the level of competition would be so high in the Big 12. I think the Big 12 is very good this year. So I, I actually think we're fortunate that we're going to have a whole lot to look back on and say, okay, you know, the comparisons between certain teams hopefully will help us when we get in into Big 12 play. But again, we've, we've got to fix ourselves in some areas, um, in several areas, um, in, in the next three weeks. Uh, well, I think just the fact that they really can shoot the basketball is always going to be a positive for them. Um, you know, they have, I mean, Nafisa being able to step out and hit those threes, I thought really shook our confidence a little bit. Um, just because it was a young player that was on her and she, she gets down, you know, young players get down on themselves when they make mistakes and make defensive errors, and I thought Nafisa really really kind of changed the game a little bit in the second quarter because we were playing really well, but we didn't have an answer for her and we didn't pay enough attention to what she was doing. So I think her her additional ability to shoot, you know, Dangerfield's made them, you know, I mean, she's come in and do, done a, a, a really admirable job at the point. Um, I mean, they're, they're good. I said this before. Uh, someone asked me the other day was – were they the best team in the country or is South Carolina or whatever? I mean, I'm, I mean, it's hard to say that they're not right now just because they still haven't lost a game. So they're clipping along pretty good, I would say.